Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm really excited to show you a fully functioning guitar rig that I've made using entirely Ableton stock plugins. Over the last few months I've basically given myself the challenge of recreating some of my most used and favourite guitar pedals but entirely within uh, Ableton and without the use of any amps basically plugging my guitar directly from the guitar into my audio interface which today I'm using the Focusrite second generation two input interface. So the only amp or preamp you're hearing is the one that comes uh, with that very reasonably priced audio interface. Throughout the video I'm going to show you what I've done with the project itself and how I've set it up and in the Patreon link below everything that you see is available for download. Just click the Patreon link below and it'll take you to the right page. I also have included how you would go about making these audio effect racks from scratch so you can skip ahead to the appropriate timestamp. I've timestamped everything so if you're looking for a specific effect have a look around the timestamps first before watching and you might be able to find exactly what you're looking for. So without further delay I've screen recorded everything so I'm going to take you through the project and if you have any questions at all please leave a comment. If you like the video please hit the like button and I have lots more music content on the way so please do hit subscribe if you find any of this interesting. So to begin with I'm going to take you through the project layout and show you exactly what's going on. And then after I do that, I'm going to show you how I made the various effects racks you're about to see. So on the first audio track, I'm calling this my main guitar rig. I've set my preferences in Ableton up so that when I press right and left on my keyboard, it will arm the next track while disarming the last track. So I go left to right and you'll see there that each track is armed then with the record button. This allowed me to map my expression pedal on each separate track and it affects one parameter within each track, as you're about to see. The expression pedal is going into the Soul Man MIDI foot switch by Source Audio. I'll be doing a detailed tutorial and overview of the Soul Man itself at a later video, but basically this pedal allows me to control Ableton while still being able to play guitar at the same time. So to begin with, let's have a look at the gain staging. My first step in this process was setting up the various chains you see here on the right side. To solo each of the chains, I just press this little S and this is what the guitar sounds like completely dry with no effects added. This is the guitar plugged directly into my audio interface. Perhaps the most important stage of this setup was getting the amp setting correct. So on this particular amp chain, there's a lot of effects involved. So first off, I have a tuner. Pretty straightforward. Then I have a gate, and the gate is for dealing with the drive as I increase the drive here. So what you'll see is when I press on my expression pedal, this is this dry wet of the dynamic tube of the pedal and of the saturator is connected with this drive knob. So as I press this up, the amount of dry wet increases on all of those pedals. If the gate was off, it's very noisy. Then we move on to the amp itself. And in Ableton, there's a, a stock plugin called Amp, but it has to be paired with uh, this cabinet effect. So if you're using the amp and you think it sounds pretty rubbish, the reason is you haven't, you haven't attached a cabinet. And for my cabinet, I actually set up another effects rack within this larger effects rack. And I have different cabinets different cabs set up, a 2x12 speaker, 2x12 speaker, and I have a 4x10 speaker. And you can go in here and mess around with the mic settings. So for this one, you can have near on axis, near off axis, and that's to do with the microphone placement on the speaker. And in this case, I went with far. So what you're hearing here is a bit of a stereo, is a bit of a stereo amp setup. This is the one amp controlling these various cabinets. I've also put in a mid-range fattener just to give a bit more warmth 
and then the warm tube. All of these effects are very subtle. They're just adding a little bit more realness to the sound. So here it is as a dry signal first. And here it is with the amp. And without the drive, sorry. So it gives me a very clean tone and that's exactly what I wanted in my amp sound to begin with. The next thing we come to in the chain of the full guitar rig is compression. So when I click into this chain, you'll see there's just a glue compressor on, stock Ableton glue compressor. And that just helps with a few of the attack peaks. So you'll see a short attack and a long release. Without it, and with it, Very subtle, but just does the trick, especially when we go to the higher gain stage. And then I have a, a short reverb, just to give it a bit more space. Next I want to look at is Shimmer. So this is a longer reverb and adds uh, far more ambience to the sound. And the beauty of having it in a chain is that I can dial this in with the volume knob. This volume knob essentially behaves like a dry wet. And all of these effects are happening in parallel alongside your dry signal. I'm going to talk about the delay setup in a little bit, um, but currently I have just a slap delay in there. So if I dial that in, you get this. I'll be going through the full delay rig in a moment because it's on channel four here. Um, but for now, that just gives you an idea of what can happen. Coming back to Wavy, I'll just show you what this is, just as a chorus ensemble. This is a Live 11 new plugin, and it sounds pretty amazing, to be honest. Just a bit of chorus, and again, you can blend in as you see fit. For tremolo, I've actually manipulated an auto pan and I've changed the phase from 180 degrees, which is the default, to zero. And that gives me this type of effect. So that's a very extreme tremolo effect, but with blending in with the dry signal, the amp signal, the compression signal, and the various reverbs in the entire chain, it just adds a little pulsing. Again, I come down to tremolo here on a later track, so I'll be revisiting this whole module. But this is how it sits in the full guitar rig. The last thing I want to show you is this freeze function, and this is acting like the Electro Harmonics Mr. Freeze pedal, if you're familiar with that one. And what I've done is, on my Soul Man, the MIDI foot switch, I've set one of the knobs to trigger this freeze to uh, 6 dB of volume, and within this chain, you'll see that I have a reverb set up and the freeze button here also triggers. So watch the freeze and the freeze volume here. When I press knob three, both of those things happen. So if I play a chord or just the bottom two open strings, that will now sustain.
And I can also do cool things like hold down the chord and blend my drive in at the same time. And that's pretty much it for the guitar rig. Like I said, I'm gonna show you how to set this up in just a moment. Both the, the effects you see and the full Ableton project is available for download via my Patreon link below for just five euro. If you only wanna be charged once, just make sure you cancel the subscription before next month. And that way you'll get all of this just for five euro. So now I'm going to take you through how you would make an audio effect rack from scratch. In the utilities drop down, grab an audio effect rack and put it on your channel. I have it on track one here. Now the next thing you want to do is start to create your chains. So I click the chains button, I right click to create chain and I'm going to rename this one dry, as in my dry guitar signal. Now it's a process of making a full chains list like you saw earlier in the video. So right click again to create a new chain and I'm gonna rename this one Amp. And then as I click in between these chains, I can add effects on that specific chain. So on the Amp chain, I'm gonna come up here to Drive and Color. I'm gonna grab an Amp and I'm gonna pop it onto that chain. So on the dry channel, we still have nothing. And on the amp channel now, we have this. So we're getting somewhere. But really what you need to do in order for the amp to sound better is to put a cabinet beside it. And you just make sure that it's inside the audio effect rack by placing this blue line just beside the amp. And now what we have is a one by 12 speaker. The microphone placement is near on axis and the mic type is a condenser. We can adjust these settings to create different sounds. We can have a two by 12 speaker. We can have near off axis. We can have a dynamic mic. So this might be the setup of a live gig. And then we can obviously alter how our amp settings would be, as though we were adjusting a real amp. So we might want more mids, a touch more treble, and maybe even touch more bass, and a bit more gain. So already it's starting to sound a bit more real. In the next chain, let's create a bit of space by adding a reverb. We come to reverb and resonance. I'm just gonna take the stock reverb and I can place it here or I can place it on the chain itself. Because the routing of these chains is in parallel, we need to think of them like return channels. So I'm gonna put my dry wet all the way to 100%. I'm gonna leave the decay time fairly low. just to give a bit of a room delay. From there, we could add in drive. And something you can also do is color code all of these. So drive might be yellow, and I think I had green initially. Reverb, blue, drive, orange. So if I come up here to my driving color, I can take the pedal So what you're hearing again is this drive in parallel with all of the other chains. Earlier on in my full guitar rig, 
you would have seen me grab a, another pedal and I placed it just before my amp. My thoughts here are the rooting of a real life amp and pedal situation is that the pedal would go in series into the amp. And I wanted to replicate that type of idea. So I'm gonna mute this drive channel for a second. I'll go back to my amp chain. And again, with this pedal plugin by Ableton, you can pick your the nature of your overdrive and distortion. You can add in a sub. And this is a, currently 100% wet. You can hear a bit of hiss here from the uh, pedal going into the amp, and that's what made me grab a gate. So if I go to my dynamics drop down, I grab a gate, I can put this before, and then I have nothing. And if I bring the threshold down. That will mean that the signal is quiet when I don't want to have anything bleed through. Make sure the return is all the way down here or else notes won't sustain. If the return's all the way up, as soon as that threshold drops off, it the sound gets cut. Being able to control the amount of gain on your amp signal is quite important. So I'm gonna use the control of drive to demonstrate how the macros work. So currently my amp signal has a full drive sound. But if I want to control how that feeds in, what I'm gonna do is press this macro button here on the audio effect rack. And I'm gonna map the dry wet of this pedal plugin to macro one. And now this macro controls the dry wet of the pedal. So when it's at 0%, I just have my clean sound. And when I blend that in, I can map the nature of the drive to macro two. And as I cycle through the type, you'll see it switches to distortion and fuzz. These macros are very useful in controlling any parameter your heart desires. And if you want more of them, you just hit this plus button for a total of 16 macros. I had set most of my macros to the volume of the chain. So I'll just do that now to show you how that works. So if I right click the volume of my chain, I can map it to macro three. And then if I didn't want an amp, amp sound and I just wanted the reverb. So that's the dry signal with the reverb. And the drive here is currently off. So that's how you would go about setting up an audio effect rack. If I'm happy with this patch or happy with this audio effect rack the way it is, I can hit the save button here and it will save in my presets and I can say guitar demo. When you hit return then it will save, but just keep in mind that whatever state each of the macros and each of the effect parameters are in, that's how it will load in. So if I get rid of this now and then drag it down again, you'll see that the dry wet is 100% because it was 100% when I saved it. If there's any questions about this, just pop me a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. So the next track I wanna show you is a wah function I've set up. I've named this track here wah, but what I've also done to save a bit of CPU power is I've put that full guitar rig that we've just talked through onto a return channel and I've sent this track 100% to that channel. So we're still getting the same tone that we had previously. But now what I've done is I've MIDI mapped my expression pedal to this EQ8, which is just an equalizer, again, stock with Ableton. And if you see here, as I move my expression pedal, 
it changes the frequency. So it essentially becomes a wah. And just one last thing I want to show you on the wah side of things is uh, the use of an auto filter to create the same sort of auto wah effect you might see in an amp or a, a simulator. Now, the only problem with this one is if you hold down a note too long, it does it holds the wah effect, so you get a wah 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 pulsing thing. But if you're just playing a bit of solo, you get kind of a moog effect or that kind of thing. And again, you can dial in all of these settings the way you want it to sound. Um, the m amount of LFO that you have in there will make the effect more pronounced. So you get. And you can dial that into the tempo of your, the global tempo of your project too, if you want to. So now we're gonna take a look at looping. The pedals that I'm trying to recreate here or emulate are the Boss RC1 loop station, which is a very common loop pedal. And also, to show you that it actually has the functionality of the most intricate boss loop pedal, which is the RC600. So to start with, I'm gonna show you how you would go about free looping um, using the looper plugin in Ableton. So in audio effects, if you go to delay and loop, looper is an option over here as, as a plugin. And when you put it down here, it looks like this. I've already renamed mine guitar free looper I again have MIDI mapped, so if you can hit Control and M, you can see what's going on here. So the record button I've set to my first stomp on the Soul Man. So when I hit that, it starts to record. When I hit it again, it stops record and plays back. Obviously nothing right now, as I haven't played anything in. And then if I want to overdub, I hit the second pedal. And when it turns blue like that in the looper, you're in overdub mode with the plus sign, symbolized by the plus sign. I can overdub as long as I want, and then when I just want to play over and not have my guitar being, or anything being um, overdubbed anymore, I hit the third button. And then the fourth one is just to clear everything and start from scratch. So just to show you how it all works, I'm gonna play in a loop now, and then I'll go through the detail afterwards. Pray for me, I'm gonna try and stay in time. So I'm gonna let that keep playing in the background. I've just taken down the chain volume here so I can talk over. So other than traditional looping, I just wanna show you some other features that are built into the Ableton Looper. So the first thing I wanna show you is the speed function. The up and down arrows actually change the octave and speed by half or double. So I bring the volume back in. <laughs> Both the speed and the octave has changed. 
Back to the original. Up an octave. So you can see for sound design purposes, you can come up with a lot of interesting types of sounds. If I press down now on my expression pedal, I actually have that mapped to the speed function too. So I'll bring back in the loop. like a uh, needle falling off uh, an LP. I can do that with this. Which is kind of a cool effect. And to get it back to the default position, I just double click to put it back to default. If you double click anything, it gets it back to the default setting in Ableton. Okay, then the other thing that I've mapped it to is this reverse function, which again is a really cool sound design feature. This is emulating parts of what the blooper pedal by Chase Bliss Audio can do. So you're getting the guts of three looper pedals in one here. then the button that I have this reverse button mapped to on my foot switch. It goes without saying in a way but I could have multiple channels set up here with multiple uh, instances of this loop looper on it. I can have synth in instruments in there, I can have drums in there and everything can be looped freely um, away from the global tempo. So just the last thing I'll show you is on the quantization control I've made sure that none is selected and on the tempo control I've made sure none is selected. You can do this where it's all mapped to one global tempo but if you want a free looping situation where you just want to open up Ableton and away you go then you can do that. Also what I've done is I've saved this free guitar loop as a template so whenever I just want to sit down and start playing I can do that. If then later on you want to figure out what tempo it was and make, it in, make your uh, sketch idea or your loop idea into a full, fully fledged song. There's a BPM that, that the looper actually guesses down here where it says BPM. So this is 131.64 right now. So if after the event I wanted to um, create a track out of this, I know that the tempo I need to set my global uh, instance to, if that's what I want to do, is the 131.64 and away I go. So that's the looping option uh, via pedals um, for Ableton. So the next thing we come to is the delay rig, which is on this channel. And I'm really excited about this because I actually feel the options here are fairly endless. I just have the full guitar rig again set up on a return channel and I have the A return going 100% to that. And then what I've done is I've MIDI mapped my expression pedal again to the second return and what's on the B return is the delay just before going on to the delay and what's involved there I haven't actually shown you how to MIDI map um, and in case anybody doesn't know how to do that I'm just going to show you quickly if I press command and M everything highlights blue and all of the highlighted blue areas are what can be MIDI mapped MIDI mapping essentially means that you can press any one of these blue highlighted areas and tell a MIDI controller or MIDI keyboard or in this case a MIDI foot switch what to do. So in this case you'll see here on my delay channel I've set my the one and zero here is my expression pedal and I've set my expression pedal to control this B return sound. If I come out command and M again out of the MIDI map mode you'll see that functioning there. So as I press down 
it sends it fully and as I put it to heel position it's off entirely and one other quick tip I want to show you is if you press command and K everything highlights orange and this is the keyboard itself the, the your computer keyboard the QWERTY keyboard you can actually set things up to uh, arm here and very simply what I've done is when I press M on my keyboard in this project the metronome turns on and off so it's just a quick way of getting to that and I also have T set up to make my tap tempo trigger so if I come out of command and K to come out of that if I start hitting T on my laptop one two three four you'll see the tempo changes to whatever I'm doing there because I've saved this project, those key mappings and MIDI mappings save. So when I close it down and I reopen it, all of those mappings are saved. And similarly, if I make a template out of this project, which I have done, it's called Guitar Rig, all of those mappings will stay intact and be saved across whatever template I have. Okay, on to the delay. So on this return, you'll see that I've got a dotted eighth. I've got an eighth. I've got a quarter and I've got a half so these are um, dotted quavers, quavers, a crotchet and a minimum and again you can dial whichever one of these in let's start with the dotted eight I have my dotted eight chain here and each of these chains has an instance of Ableton stock echo plugin so if you have Ableton you have this plugin already and the reason why I think the options are endless here is that the echo plugin itself has such a vast array of elements to mess around with you have control over the eq of the delay you have the control of the modulation of the delay and there's loads of amazing effects you can get out of just this part of it and then you have this thing called character and the ducking allows you allows you to side chain your delay a little bit so that the clean signal comes through stronger i can set up as many changes as i want here and i have different types of effects so I go from my quite regular sounding dotted eighth. You get the typical ping pong edge type of thing going on there. And again, if I feel like that's too loud, I have my expression pedal to dial in on that delay track, how much of it I want. This tape effect is the one I was messing around with most recently. So I'll take off the dotted eighth. I just want to show you a cool warbly effect that I came across. So if I go into my tape effect chain and I go to the character, you'll see that I've enabled this wobble thing. And if I play this, you see that this is giving it a bit of a, a warble feel or tape. At its extremes, it sounds a bit crazy. It gives some kind of chorusing, but little imperfections start to also come into the sound, which may be something that was is useful in a sound design situation. So coming on from the last effect that I talked about, the tape thing in the delay, I have a lo-fi track here where I've where I've put together everything that's going to give you that kind of grainy. A uh, warbly tape sound that is quite popular in lo-fi hip-hop and those types of genres. So just a quick rundown here. Again, I've got this lo-fi guitar audio effect track set up. And what's going on here is I've got an EQ8. Uh, and this is to give it that kind of matchbox EQ. So not very full bodied. Just taking all of the low end out. And depending on what you want for your mix, you can really take everything out of it. Or, I think about here is good for me. Then I have this vinyl distortion thing, and this just gives you a bit of crackle. I'll put up the volume so you hear the effect. So 
So I think you have to be careful with this one. I, um, I try to keep it as subtle as possible. Just that you hear a bit of crackle so that it, the sound isn't as clean and, and it has a bit more grain to it. Frequency shifter is one of the more stranger effects that Ableton has as a, as a stock plugin. But if you press this wide function here and mess around with the spread, it actually creates a bit of chorusing. In the chorus ensemble, this is what's giving us the shaking of the pitch. If you click the vibrato section, um, and then dial in the rate and amount to what you want. So you can go from the absolutely crazy to something a bit more subtle. And then the amount. Again, whatever you think suits your piece of music. Uh, the warmth here, uh, adds a bit of what it says on the tin, a bit of warmth, but true saturation. So again, um, if you're trying to emulate tape saturation, this could help do that for you. And then I have the same wobble effect that we talked about previously in the uh, delay module that I came up with. And again, I just have this subtly dialed in. <laughs> I also have some chorusing happening in this delay via the module. So that's my lo-fi guitar audio effect track. So with chorus, all of the plugins you see on this track here can get you uh, chorusing. I've talked about the frequency shift shifter in the last one. So the frequency shifter, to be honest, just sounds a bit bonkers if you mess around with these things. But if you press actually the wide button here and just bring up the spread a little bit. And the chorus ensemble, I've, again, I've talked about, there's literally a million and one things you can do with this pedal and I just would encourage you to go experiment with it. it it sounds great straight away, in my opinion, um, and as good as any analog pedal that I've played played with for chorus. There's also this phaser flanger thing. But again, just to know that it's there, and then phaser. The autumn pan can kind of do this sort of thing, but it's a very particular sound and makes more sense actually in the tremolo thing which we're about to come on to now. Coming on to the tremolo, if you set the phase to zero, then what you're essentially getting is the waveform here. So I have the rate of this autopan MIDI mapped to my expression pedal. So as I press down in the toe position, I have a longer tremolo and as I move back to heel position I have a shorter uh, rhythm I can also map I can also press the Hertz button and this will do it by frequency the reason why it's sounding so severe right now is because the amount is up quite high and if I do it to 100% it'll simply act as an on-off. It's also because the shape is in like this, so if I take the shape off, it'll just do the normal sine wave. Also messing around with the amount will give you more subtle more subtle tremolo effects and then I can also mess around with the uh, waveform.
So lots of parameters to play around with. Effect that I would like to show you is an auto swell effect that I actually hid away here on the very first thing I showed you. So we turn this on. It's one of the effects that you can download, but basically what it does is it's a gate that I've set to cut off the initial attack of the guitar string. So you can get a kind of synth effect here, either uh, emulating strings, as in bowed strings. And with this auto swell, what you want to mess around with is the return and also the threshold. So the threshold will tell the where you want it and you set it just as you can see here I've set it just as the sound creeps in I've set the attack all the way up so that it will stop the initial attack and then the return if I have the return all the way up you have to play very short notes or else the sound dies away straight away so if I had a fast passage But if you wanted something that had a little more sustain, you'll need to put the return up. And after messing around with this for some time, I've come to this conclusion that the return set here and the, the threshold here. If you have a different guitar, you'll have to dial in the threshold because some of the output gain could be higher or lower depending on what instrument you have. I didn't explain what the OD, DS and Fuzz option was here within my main guitar rig. Basically, it, it changes the nature of this drive. So currently this pedal, if I go into my drive chain, I've got this pedal, the Ableton pedal, set to overdrive. But as I go through here, about half of the way up, it switches to distortion. And then if I go the full way over, it switches to a full effect. So here it is, full drive. That's overdrive. If I go to distortion, you get this sound. More metal. And then if I go to fuzz, you get this kind of wild. So in terms of experimental effects, I just have two that I'd like to share with you. The first one is uh, using the Pitch Hack, which is a Max for Live device. It's available for free as long as you have Ableton. So I've set up the Pitch Hack on a return channel. So I'll turn it up full to begin with. So you can see kind of a mad sound, but loads of sound design options in that one. The, I have this saved as a pitch shift delay, so that's also downloadable from the Patreon link. And then the last experimental effect I want to show you is this one I've nicknamed Space Choir. 
And essentially what's happening here, I have it set up on my D return channel. I'm using the pitch hack to get an upper octave and it's giving me spectral blur or the tail end of a reverb type sound. This can work great directly on the channel as well, whereby you wouldn't hear any of the dry signal at all. Okay, so in this next track, I have an octave effect. So for all your kind of organ style effects or even like a synth guitar effect, uh, this works really well. It is the only track that I've had to use a third party plugin, which is Sound Toys Little Alter Boy. I couldn't get this to work with the pitch hack that Ableton does have for free in its um, extensions pack. I'll run through how this works in case anybody has sound toys um, or is thinking of getting it. So what I've got again is my chain set up. I've got a dry signal in here with nothing on it. This is simply just my guitar as is. I still have the tone from my full guitar rig because I have the return set up like I did previously on the WAH channel. So that's where you're getting the reverb and all that good stuff from. Okay, so the octave up then, blend it in, sounds like this. And obviously I can just have that by itself. Which is its own type of thing. Then the octave down. But what I, what I think is really cool is when you space these out a little bit. So I, again, I can play around with the panning. So let's do 10 and, or 10 and 10, yep. And if I have all of those engaged. So that's the clean sound happening at the same time as the octave up and same time as the octave down. And actually the octave down is a bit loud. So I can again, I can just dial all this into taste depending on what I want to do. So the secret weapon here, I think in this one, is if I just solo this out for a second, I have a pitch shifter. So what I've done is MIDI mapped my expression pedal again, but this time it's controlling the pitch. So if I play this open E, which kind of gives you the drop tuning idea. So here's the octave up. Here's what it would be as normal. You get that warbly effect just because it's on the trans quantize setting. Which in itself might be something you're going for. Gives it a bit of a lo-fi feel. So setting it seven and turning everything else back on will give me this sound. fifths so that's my octave uh, pedal again you can download this and all of the other things you've seen from that patreon link for just five euro you will have to have the little altar boy for this to work when you download it though so that's everything in this project if you stayed till now thank you so much for watching and i really do hope you found something useful here i'll have lots more music content coming very shortly this has been david kennedy and i'll see you in the next one